Post-translational modifications are typically thought of as small chemical groups that are attached to protein side chains. Yet one class of modification involves the covalent attachment of an entire protein to lysine side chains on a target protein. The most common of these proteins is ubiquitin, a compact 76 amino acid protein found in all eukaryotes. Ubiquitin is covalently attached to lysine side chains in a process known as ubiquitination, also called ubiquitylation. In this process, the C-terminus of ubiquitin is covalently attached to the lysine epsilon amine by a peptide-like bond known as an isopeptide linkage. This modification adds about 8,500 daltons for each ubiquitin attached, which is more than 100 times the molecular weight of a single phosphate group. A substrate protein can be modified by the attachment of one or more ubiquitin monomers or any of the different types of polyubiquitin chains. The polyubiquitin chains can occur because ubiquitin itself has seven lysine residues, each of which can be ubiquitinated. Ubiquitin can also be attached to the N-terminal amine of another ubiquitin, resulting in linear polymer ubiquitin proteins. There are thus eight different types of polyubiquitin chains, each distinguished by the ubiquitin lysine through which one ubiquitin is attached to the next. Each type of ubiquitin modification whether it's a single ubiquitin or one of the different types of chains, has a distinct biological function. Perhaps the best understood is the targeting of proteins for degradation by covalent attachment of a K48-linked polyubiquitin chain. The K48-linked chain is recognised by the proteasome, which proteolyses the protein into short peptides. In contrast, modification with K63-linked polyubiquitin chains modulates the activities of proteins with critical roles in the DNA damage response and in the inflammatory response. Let us now examine the cascade of reactions that lead to ubiquitin attachment to a protein. These reactions are catalyzed by three different enzymes known generically as E1, E2 and E3. In the first step of this reaction, the ubiquitin C-terminus is covalently attached by a thioester bond to the active site cysteine of the E1 or ubiquitin activating enzyme. This reaction is powered by ATP hydrolysis. The E1 ubiquitin conjugate then binds to an E2 or ubiquitin conjugating enzyme and catalyzes the transfer of the ubiquitin onto the E2 active site cysteine. This step is a transthiolation reaction since the final product is also a thioester linked ubiquitin. In the final step, the ubiquitin is transferred from the E2 to a lysine on the target protein. This step is orchestrated by the E3 ligase, which brings together the ubiquitin loaded E2 enzyme and the substrate and helps catalyze the transfer of ubiquitin from the active site cysteine of the E2 to the amino group of a lysine side chain forming a covalent bond. Multiple classes of E3 ligases catalyze this last ubiquitin transfer step in somewhat different ways. The most common type are the ring E3 ligases, which contain a so-called ring domain. This domain binds both the E2 ubiquitin conjugate and the substrate, and stimulates the direct attack of the substrate lysine on the E2 ubiquitin thioester. This attack leads to the covalent attachment of the ubiquitin C-terminus to the lysine. Another E-class, such as the HECT ligases, contain an active site cysteine. In this case, the HECT E3 binds the E2 ubiquitin conjugate and the substrate, but first stimulates transfer of ubiquitin from the E2 to the active site cysteine of the E3 in yet another transthiolation reaction. The HECT ligase then catalyzes attack of the substrate lysine on the ubiquitin E3 thioester and the ubiquitin C-terminus is conjugated to the substrate lysine. Polyubiquitin chains consisting of one ubiquitin C-terminus linked to a lysine residue, or N-terminal amine, are assembled in the same E1, E2, E3 enzymatic cascade. For example, K48-linked polyubiquitin chains are formed by linking the C-terminus of one ubiquitin to lysine 48 in the next. This linkage specificity is thought to be governed primarily by the E2 enzyme. Although most eukaryotic cells contain a single type of E1 enzyme, they typically have a dozen or more different E2 enzymes and hundreds of E3 enzymes. 
For example, the human genome contains around 30 E2 enzymes and at least 500 E3 enzymes. The large number of E3 enzymes and the great diversity in the different domains they contain, in addition to E2 binding regions, reflects the need of the cell to very specifically target particular protein substrates for ubiquitination, as well as its need to interact with a variety of E2 enzymes.